The crystal radio set was one of the earliest forms of radio. It was simple in its design, as can be seen from this basic circuit diagram. It reached its greatest popularity in the 1920s and early 1930s when broadcasting was just getting started. Often radios were housed in a wooden box with a panel at the top on which the components were mounted. Clearly visible here are the coil, the crystal detector also known as the cat's whisker, and the dial for the tuning capacitor. In this nicely presented example of a radio, the crystal detector is seen on the left. The terminals for the headphones are at the front, and to the right is the tuning capacitor, contained within a transparent tube to keep any dirt out. At the top of the capacitor assembly, it's possible to see a dial. This was used to note the best positions for any radio stations. This radio has a box on which the lid can be shut when not in use. Again, all the major components can be seen, with the crystal detector at the back and the tuning dial on the left, with its calibration marks. Home construction was also very popular. Commercially made radios were expensive, and for many, building their own sets was the only way to own a radio. This particular one lacks a little of the finish of the others, but no doubt it worked just as well. Crystal radios were not only used for domestic broadcast listening. This particular radio was built by Marconi's Wireless Telegraph Company Limited in London, possibly between 1918 and 1920. Marconi installed many systems on ships and in many other areas. It can be seen on this particular radio there are lots of additional controls and options that could be used with it. The crystal detector was at the heart of the radio. This detector is covered with a transparent tube which prevented dust and dirt getting onto the crystal that would degrade its performance. In this detector it's possible to see the thin wire that made contact with the crystal. This gave the name Cat's Whisker to these detectors, and hence also to the radios. The detector on the home-built receiver was a little more primitive and did not have a cover, but it's easy to see the cat's whisker or wire and the point contact with the crystal itself. The position of the contact with the crystal needed to be changed periodically. Eventually new crystals needed to be bought. They were sold in tins like this one, often along with the new wires or cat's whiskers and tweezers to hold them. The circuits used in these radios were wide and varied. As the headphones were powered purely by the energy picked up on the antenna, it was necessary to make the very best use of this signal. Circuits tried to optimise the performance in different ways, as we can see here. <laughs> 